Jesus. We're heading out oh, he's got a up the cable car to the dome. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you just keep an eye on the red light to make sure it's <laughs> the point? I shot a movie with a dog uh, in it and he really liked this. Ah, okay. He couldn't <laughs> put this in front of me. Oh yeah, there's no there's another one. Okay, so what are you shooting with? I've never seen uh, such a tragedy here before. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to need to walk uh, I've, I've got a, uh, a notepad and a pen. If, uh, Dennis, well, are you coming with us? I can carry whatever you want. I'm alright. You can take it easy. The angle is kind of, because it's super wide angle. Yeah, I would say point of focus or something like that. Yeah. That's good. I couldn't have imagined a better use for this now. After we're all done, I'll send you those photos. Yeah, yeah, Keith wants them. I'm glad it's all maintenance now, so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I didn't even bring my <laughs> cell phone today, because, uh, uh, I can take pictures. Take lots. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. You got room for three more? Well, I have like seven. You're, you're I, I'm raising all that crew up there. So. Oh, okay. So can we go ahead? No. Why okay. should I? Because. Oh, oh yeah, here, because I know that you're the source. Or, no, oh, the source. now I'm the source, right? <laughs> oh, what? Have a good one. Just you two guys up? Just two? Yeah, the, the other guy's going up with the film crew. Oh, okay. But. Okay. So How many? They'll probably be filming on the way up, so. If, if they ride the cable car. So you'll need to be on your best behavior and good smile and all that. Uh, no, I don't come out in, in, in video. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, You'd I'm be not. photogenic for sure. Huh? You'd be photogenic. No, no, no. no. Come on, give us a, give us a thumbs no, up. No, no, give no, us no, a smile no, no, and a no, thumbs no, no. up. Um, give me a second. Okay. Cool. There's a lot of people going up today. Off we go. Green light's still going. Oh, red light. Red light's still going. Yeah, now you, you, your hard hat, by the way, should be tight enough that if you tip your head over, it doesn't fall off. We 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 end up with more hard hats in the dish that way than I've seen as many as three out there at once. already the clouds forming to the south where the incoming winds are uplifted by the uh, what some people call a mountain range yeah it's, uh, our, our highest peak here is about 4,000 feet okay somewhere over there isn't it incredible but yesterday we were standing yeah that tiny little point
the other side to that point over there, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we were just on the other side of that. And I noticed they have air conditioning up here as well for the, the equipment. Nice. Air conditioning? Only in the receiver floor. Right. The, the, the big blowers are cooling for the S band flight track transmitter. Of you. It's a little imagination, but I think I can see the ocean horizon. Oh yeah, straight through. The oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, on good days, it's much much better. From from our height, the actual horizon out there is about 40 miles out. This is quite a structure. See, where we're going to end up working is down near the bottom of the dome. So we get a uh, fair amount of up and down just dealing with the platform. How often is the helipad used? Uh, extremely infrequently. Primarily for emergencies? Yeah. Or emergency delivery of a 400 watt transfer. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to bleed that out. Oh. <laughs> This whole affair that's suspended here is about 900 tons. Pretty good sized heavy thing. American. Wow. Holy moly. I hadn't heard that one in connection with this yet. This is my first time up here in about four months. My last time up was the, the same morning they discovered the earthquake damage. Oh, don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, pull your hands in now. Okay. This, this little bar here needs to raise. Yep. Then you can the, the, the door swing in. And this one too, or just the one? Yeah, both both of them. Uh -huh. There's a handle here. In fact, opening the right hand oh, great. door operates the final interlock. Thank you. I was chatting with my grandmother over IRC, not IRC, Skype, and, I was and she, say. she was saying, I know all about the dish, I, I read about the height and the, the megahertz, I know it all, if you need any help, just ask me, but don't you dare, don't you dare go up. So, Sorry, Grammy. <laughs> Nana, here I am. Thank we, you for um, your concern, but I think we're all, we're all good. As I was mentioning to Dennis yesterday, this place is basically invented by this Professor Gordon at Cornell. Yeah. And uh, he visited here on the occasion of his 90th birthday, and we brought him up here to, just to, just to ride here was all. Wow. Just to show him, you know, remind him of old times. He you know, died right? just a few months later of old age. I guess it was um, good timing then. Yeah, I guess you got the chance to... Okay. So this is actually the waveguide that... That's, um, that's for the 430 transmitter. Where's the big one? Hmm? Where's, where's the big wave guy? Well, that is the big wave guy. Oh. So that's the WR2100. Which means 21 inches wide. And I did hear you correctly in that there was only approximately 1 dB of loss yeah. of the signal coming from all the way back yeah. down in the control room. Pretty through. remarkable, isn't it? That's magic. Yeah. That truly is magic. 
Okay. And we still have to show Dennis the high voltage power supply down there too, don't we? Yes, indeed. He'll enjoy that, I think. <laughs> Watch out for bolt heads and things sticking up the handrails. If we wave, can you see? Where's our shadow? <laughs> Not quite. How are you doing? Good. This is wild. <laughs> this is really wild. Oh right, so it actually now comes this, in this here. This thing right here is a rotary joint for the 430 to get it down onto the rotating arm. Wow. And so anyway, just down the stairs you see there, uh, there's a step from the ring to the top step of the last ladder section. It's kind of a big step, so okay. be expecting that. Thanks. And depending on your inclination, you can go, either, go down either forward or backwards. Is there a chance that the entire structure will move while we're up here? If you want me to grab anything. Uh, yeah, I'll you the stick. Don't give him the stick! Hello. Morning. The nice view is pretty much straight down from here. Oh, there's the there's the pickup truck. Here's some, oh yeah, I can line that. Thank you. Here, you just have to find whatever you can find to step on. It's not very hard, but we're on the easy spot. Helium compressor for cooling the receiver is a little bit damp. Out. We're standing on top of the dome.
it in a little bit. Oh, you can see the cable car there. Hmm? That's the cable car in the shadow there. Helium lines, 
silicone uh, wires, fiber optic cables, the whole bubble wax. Helium as well. Yeah, I that. That's the helium line there, for example. All right. Uh, those are the solar cables. So, so they comes up into that radially open so it be strong surface. And that drum wraps or unwraps before it turns. And the, the cable is unwrapped from that and it comes along here and goes around that drum. And there's a mechanism that coordinates the motion of the drum. So it has to move it along this way and it requires to take up the slack in each position of the drum. And you can see the interesting stuff part of the floor from the contact points of the drum repeating your pattern. Drive around. It's incredible. Yeah. Now the place where we will connect with the wave guy coming is right up there. Now that's the inactive one. You can see it's got a wave guy. It's an adapter already on it. One on the other side. So, assuming we stole the uh, 716 M coax, so we will be replacing that adapter with one we're showing the other. Right, 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 right. And the PA would, would go where do you think? Huh? The PA would go where do you think? Uh, I'm guessing. Depending on how long it looks like it's going to be here, uh, we might as well just park it on the table. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, I don't know, they, they might object to that because, and of course, the normal s works, but they might have to get in here and fix something. Okay. The design that was going to be a part of the first guy that's going to be off, the guy that's going to be off, the screen. So we got to do it. Bodies up here are big wave guide transfer switches. So, a normal radar is an operation of transmitting. The transfer switch is turned so that the output of the place drawn goes to the feed, the transmit feed. And the Whoa, will be moving to the transmit feed. It's important to be connected to the transmit feed. Our machine, we have to leave the high voltage turned on the tubes and turn off the RF drive. So the tubes still make a lot of what's called phase noise. Yep. And in order to avoid seeing that being radiated out to transmit more and stopping the noise performance of the receiver, uh, they rotate the switch so that the twice drawn is right in the dummy load. Okay. And the thing that will be connected to will face. Yep. And that's the condition for these two before we're operating. Right. Now normally, uh, when we're not doing strange things, um, those adapters are taken off and put in place with metal plates. I'm uh, kind of surprised to see adapters still there. Right. So, so at one point, um, somebody didn't call it. about this issue of how much power a tight end can connect. Yes. I, I got two different answers that are wildly different. Really? So there's the question of which one to believe. Okay. Um, one of them said that a, a good, clean, shiny new uh, tight end connector can handle up to 500 watts in the computer. That's what I read as well. And it, um, Emphasize that it's not being nice to us, but you know, it wasn't going to be reliable for a long time. Yes. That's not so much an issue here, I guess. Yes. The other one I thought was much more favorable, and it said over a kilowatt. So, right now, as I understand it, the um, Buckinger hybrid up here has been bypassed. And if you, if you do this balanced amplifier thing, 
Yeah. Don't without one tube. Yep. You only have one quarter of the output. Yep. Or you know, the output from that split stuff you've got to give it the desired low and then determination. So, but if you bypass the hybrid and the pipe is straight to it, then you can have power. Yep. In our business, it's a lot better to sort of power. Still not nearly as nice as full power, but that's the next best thing. So, I presume. Obviously, that's the tube that connects to what we balance on that transfer switch there. But Key is on when 
motion to disable. And I hope that better terminology is used just get somebody to agree with that. Yeah, it seems like uh, stick a standard. Uh, so are we having a look at the receivers as well? Or what? Are we having a look at the receivers as well? No, uh, we're just moving. Is that what you're worried about? No, no, the receivers. Are we also going down to oh, this? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I apologize. My hearing is really crappy. But that's all right. Puerto Rico's not a place where you want to go and have people poking around here. Yeah. 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 Waveguide actually, the big one comes in right there. Yep. And it's just yep. the moment. The, wa the waveguide, first of all, we, we get our signals in a movable object like this by means of a slotted waveguide. And the waveguide is actually sort of over our head. Well, more or less lined up with that. And uh, its cross section, instead of just being a simple closed rectangle, it's rather more like that. All right. There's a big slotted section here. Yep. With the gap small enough that there's a mechanism of energy leaking out the gap. Yep. And then there's a piece of real thin wave guy that sticks up through that and connects to a thing called the collector, which is a fairly sizable thing, you know, with dimensions vaguely like this. It rides along inside the wave guy on plastic wheels. Oh. And so it catches the energy coming down the slotted guy, turns it around, gets it into this very thin wide wave guide coming down the, through the slot, and then that is transitioning back into what's called a half height wave guide, which is that stuff over there, and it brings the signal on to here. And that's on, one, on this side of the arm. The other side of the arm is that big long spike antenna, yes. which is also a 430 mega antenna. So it has a comparable arrangement. But it's really simple because that set up in the Holds that antenna out of the little cubicle hut that's called the carriage house. And that's for 430 only, no rotary 4 or any of that kind of stuff. So um, when we uh, set up to use that setup for ionospheric radar, there's a big waveguide switch to this road that connects the transmitter into one polarization of the antenna, and then the remaining receiver connects to the opposite polarization of the antenna. And here we have the more complicated deal because this, this is the 430B here. Uh, it has two polarizations, same, same thing, two or three polarizations. But if you notice, it moves from the floor and there was a floor car. Yep. And that's a big complicating factor. So, what we do if we want to use this side for 430 radar, which we often do, we call it dual beam operation. So we set a splitter in mid wave guide to split the transmitter power evenly between the two halves of the arm. Okay. Then we rotate the floor, so this is at the focus, which is over yonder. And that's the that's the receiver at the focus there. The newer down there. And that's the 327 megahertz receiver, so it's, it doesn't have a, a horn feed. It's got two cross dipoles over a ground plane. Right. Well, I'll we'll take it down and show you that stuff in a minute. So anyway, position this at the, at the focus. We take the key out of the switch and sort of hide it away. There are no accidents. 
this waveguide transition and all of this stuff comes off. And then that there's a piece of guide hanging up there. Yep. Okay. With a flexible section at the end. That's lowered into place and it fits across the gap between this flange here and the end of that wave guide here. And there so air can get lovingly hammered into place and the holes line up and bolted in place. And you can imagine the ruckus that would raise if somebody tried to move the floor with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is cooling then? Uh, yeah, this is cooling for the receiver. The low noise amps are in this metal door here. That's the refrigerator. And so the helium uh, goes in here, room temperature nominally, and about 300 psi. It comes out of here a little bit warmer than when it's running. Uh, you, know, you can feel it's slightly warmer to the touch. But yeah, that's the exit helium from the refrigerator. Well, you can hear it. Yeah. So the innards there are cooled to about 15 degrees Kelvin. 15? Wow. That gives the amplifiers themselves noise temperature about 3 degrees Kelvin. Yep. Which is about 0.04 dB noise because Yep. That's so pretty phenomenal. It's a little better than your average TV set. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Wow. And uh, the, so the, the refrigerator there doesn't actually do the work. The, the thermodynamic work is done by the big compressor too. Hearing up there. What? And this thing is, I like to think of it as a smart expansion valve. What it does is there's a cylinder down inside there, sort of a thin wall stainless steel with there, with a displacer piston that moves up and down it. And the inside of the displacer piston it has a conduction pad for the limb through some sort of thermal mass, right? like maybe a, you know, a bunch of you know, lead beads or something like that. And so it moves up and down the cylinder, it's about an inch and a half stroke. And the uh, helium is valved in and out of that to a valve inside the drive unit there. Uh, in synchronism with the motion, so it's valved in at the right place and it's valved out at the right place. And magically it pushes up. It's called the Gifford McMahon thermodynamic cycle. Gifford McMahon. Okay. I'll go back through the emails, and I think I saw a picture okay. now, of that wave got adapter. I'll, I'll get okay. that connected. That was one of the last outstanding pictures. So. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's there up top. It's right there. Yeah. 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 We just got to talk it out. With yeah. Family. Yeah. But, you know, worst case, i got to go back to the hotel and sit at the hotel and wait for email. But after this, that's probably all we're going to be able to do anyway. If you set up, uh, they said that around 3.30, they're going to be able to do an observation of satellite. So at 3.30, uh, uh, 4.30, they got this other S-band thing. So we can get at least a half an hour of data that we can then go back and process. Happy days. Well, yeah. Let's hook up a USO. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what that's what Phil that's what Phil was talking about. This is down there. We're going to hook up a receiver today and listen. To, we're just going to listen to the satellite today. Okay. So that's downstairs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, did you see the fiber optic and all that stuff? We, we, were, we haven't seen where it comes out yet, but we're aware of it. Okay. We we're getting ready to go down. Okay. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're ready to go. Uh, what do we need to do now? Uh, I guess it's in, in Dana's. Yeah, we're going to head downstairs. Okay, go ahead and do that. And then I'll just follow you. Yeah. Are you going to follow him out? Yeah. Well, whatever. I, I, I will. Yeah, let me go out first. Actually. I'm going to put up here. I'm going to try it. Hey, Austin, turn around. Gotcha. One of you? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks right. a lot. Sure. Is my, least I can is my do. thing blinking? It's blinking, yeah. That's awesome that you have one of those with you. I've got mine, but it still isn't charged. Ah, uh, and you don't have a stylus uh, hat now. Say, don't fall over. Don't, don't fall, fall over. over. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Can we do one with the thumbs up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, I can get that. Whoops. Nice. He's been really nice. It's my notebook. He's been carrying it around. Oh, yeah, that's yours. All right. One one with this one. Uh, this is this top guy, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Sure. All right. Let's rock and roll. Uh, you want here? Or you want yeah. Right? yeah. And what's your name? What's that? Balling. What's it? Balling. Balling. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. It's a fun name. It's hard to like register. It's What's Hungarian. It? Oh, it's Hungarian. Oh. Because I was thinking about that, I didn't realize that was a tripod, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like to be on the Yeah. Smart. How's it going? Great. I mean, I thought they were like, are you trying to freedom? I'm like, a little? It's going to be a little bit of freedom. I got it's great when they need kind of platform stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the part where I was like, uh, that's just a lockdown table. Ah, and then it's that. It's filming the only to turn it on and see if they turn off and take it out. Are we doing a, a ceremonial exit on the camera? <laughs> that looks serious. I guess we're going down here. <laughs> Are we going down here, Dana? Yeah, let's go down here. All right, I need to check on some fiber stuff in here that I forgot earlier. Expecting to have children. I said, I hope you don't mind some key marks. Okay, so now, uh huh. So you, can, you can see we have uh, feeds all over the place yeah. around the tour. Here's a fairly high frequency one. And you notice this little arrangement here. Uh, this is a shutter. When we transmit, we close all these shutters so they cover up the beads. Oh, well, let me try again. You see, it's up in the transmitter room, and I just don't have one answer. Okay, so the feed out there that I'm zapping with the laser. Yeah. physically covering it like here, but it's done by a set of relays mounted right above the floor, which are operated by the same system that controls these. Yeah. Now, over yonder, that's the S-band transmit horn that we normally use and that we'll be using for this. Yeah. That's the normal radar S-band receiver, which is a very narrow band receiver, carefully optimized for the radar. Yeah. And so it's not a because of a close proximity, it's got a, a more precision kind of shutter, drive motor, and so forth to 
drive it closed. Yeah. And when we do a normal radar, we position that the transmit board at the focus. Yeah. We transmit for typically a few minutes. And we shut off the transmitter. And we rotate the board slightly so that that's at the focus. Open the shutter and begin receiving. Yep. And a typical observation will evolve back a fair number of times. Yeah. Now, in our case, uh, we will not be able to use that receiver because it's too narrow band. Yeah. So instead, we'll use the receiver next to it over yonder. Yeah. Which covers the frequency range of interest. But yeah. since it's further away, the turn turnaround time between transmit and C will be somewhat longer. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll still be reasonably under 15 seconds. Yeah, that's, that's plenty. Okay, good. Yeah, because right now, right now the round trip is about 138 seconds. Okay, so we can transmit for most of that time and have a leisurely turnaround. Yep. 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 All right, cool. Uh, what else do we need to do? Do you need to see the fiber? Do you need to go back upstairs for that or what? Yeah, I need to take a quick look. Um, but there's so much activity going on. It's, it's a little bit of a matter of flux, but uh, I've been told the fiber can easily reach anywhere on the rotary floor, so I guess we don't have to worry about it too much. Right. All right, cool. You got an impressive place here, Dana. Oh, thank you. We try to keep it that way. Well, we hope we can help uh, publicize it so this place never gets shut down. Now, we'd hate to see it shut down, that's for sure. Well, it's just stupid. It's like the larger fight that we're fighting you know, there's several satellites right now that they're talking about stopping use of. And you know, with with the government spending almost four trillion dollars a year, it, to us, it's you know, it's destroying our future by cutting the little bit of funding to this to drop into a black hole that yeah. wouldn't make any difference. So it was interesting, uh, Ramos uh, was one of the ones who donated for the uh, for the dish. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, 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 one of the founders of TRW. That was pretty cool. So, all right, so basically work-wise, all we need to do now is just look at the fiber and then we're out of here. Well, we don't, well, nothing we can do with them right now. I just wanted to verify the, where, they, where they were. Okay, because we don't want to take up any more of your time than we need to. So uh, yeah. let's go ahead and do that, and then get their shots when we get out of here. Yeah, but the four will be able to actually work, or, yeah. or I mean transmit. Uh, we need to bring the fiber, set up an amplifier to make up for the fiber loss. Yeah. Uh, then find a, a coax cable that runs up to the transmitter floor through yeah. the cable wrap or through some facsimile thereof. Uh, probably a little bit more gain on top of that going into the 500 watt transmitter system. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, trans we'll send the raw S band signal all the way up through fiber. Okay. I've, I've got a presently unused fiber receiver and transmitter pair that work up to 12 gigahertz. So. Cool. That's the uh, band of the duck suit for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, in terms of the cable going from there up to the transmitter, do we have one of those or do we need to? Okay, I believe there is one in place as a spare, but condition unknown. Yeah. And uh, if that does not work, then we'll have to do something a little harder. Yeah. Okay. Um, it could range from running, it well, could range from repairing it, it was just a connector problem. Or repairing it yeah, in place yeah. or running a new cable through the cable wrap which would be quite an effort yeah. or we have two temporary cables flashed up there that don't go through the cable wrap they just end up in the drama it's, it's, it's the center of rotation up in the transmitter room right and uh, if we can guarantee that nobody moves the floor unless somebody's up there watching to see if these cables don't get in trouble yeah. and use those. Okay. But we can't just go away and leave them in that way unattended because right. sooner or later they would get into trouble and canker. Chaos with this and say something bad would happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Do you think uh, you could get some info on the non-linearity of the fiber link? Um, 
I'm not too concerned about it. I believe the 1 dB compression point is a little over 0 dBm at the input. Okay. Um, and we, we can drive it a fair amount harder than that if we want. Okay. And may, and may want to do that just to reduce the amount of pain requirement up here. Sure. One thing I'm concerned about is between the gain and the power amplifier, which is what? More than 50 dB. Yeah. Maybe 50, 60 dB or thereabouts. Right. And the makeup gain for the fiber loss, we would end up with something like close to 90 dB total gain all at one frequency, and that's a little scary. Yeah. And so I'm concerned that we might end up, you know, if we have any leaks in the cables or anything, we end sure. up creating a giant high power oscillator. That's true. Or, or even if not that, a severely non fast response with peaking here and there or whatnot. Well, and so if the worst comes to worst, we might have to do a button up and an eye up and do a frequency conversion up here with stuff that we blue gel. Yes, yeah. Make something. And maybe we'll be in luck, and the amp will have a couple built in, and then we can maybe make an assessment on the signal quality through that original link. Okay. So, we, you know, a lot of the way, what happens will depend on us getting the actual transmitter in, put it in place, yeah. Yeah. and then running tests with the transmitter actually radiating. Yeah. Because that's where the leakage path will be. Because some of the energy from the horn misses the reflector, sprays around all over the place, and a little bit of that even finds its way up there. Yeah. Well, nothing's perfect. Yep. Yeah. And, and to to give you an idea of the, the kind of numbers, uh, where we're standing right now would be a very bad place to be if they run the one megawatt transmitter. Oh yeah. Uh, and even on the stairway going up. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, the receiver room for the rotary floor and the transmitter room are both sort of on the borderline of being marginally safe, right. from what I understand. So if, if you were ever up here and through some horrible snafu, somebody turned on the transmitter, you could put your can get in one of those rooms and slam the door and take cover and then get on the phone and say, hey, I'm up here. Yes, I'm getting warm. <laughs> You've heard the stories about in Canada in the early days of microwave, the guys would stand in front of the beam to get warm. Yeah. I've, I've done that with laser beams. I uh, worked for an outfit that had about a 10 watt CO2 laser with a beam felt like so. Yeah. And we were shining it at Target out in the field on a cold winter day. And I went out there and discovered that I could take my gloves off and hold my hand in the beam. Nice way of warming your hand. Yeah. Very good. And perfectly safe. Yeah, when you have that much of a uh, diffusion, no, it's not diffusion, what do you call it? Uh, divergence? Divergence in the beam, yeah. All right. All right, so we're done. Uh, do you need anything else down here? Not down here, no. All right, let's do it. Let's get out of here then. We don't want to take up too much of these guys' time. So what's that? Yeah. This is the shutter back. This particular one is pneumatic, so I, I can actually forge it in the place. Yeah. Most, most of them are electric motors and gear drive, you can't do that. But we're very protective of these because if somebody banged one of these, they could yeah. throw it out of wax so it didn't close properly and we'd never know it. Yeah. And transmit and burn out the receiver. Yeah. And these are the motor, the two motors for the platform? They, they, these are the motors that turn the floor. Okay, and then, so, I, this big thing here, was that okay, a that shutter or was that? It's a sliding yeah. shutter for Alpha. Oh, you know, right. Alpha so needs alpha protection goes too. Over there. The right. We're just saying that I should get sponsored by Nike because if I'm wearing like some like loud shoes on there. So I, was, I was thinking that. I was wearing this. <laughs>
I thought you just said yes, that was like a... Sorry, it was a question. Yeah, yeah. It is. Is that it? One dB of loss through that <laughs> from here to there. Hey, they're efficient. <clears throat> Should we consider the IF for the transmitters a contingency then? Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> if, we, if we do that, we have to do that. We need your show back. For the straight shot. I'm so glad we didn't do this. We'll be okay But in terms of that contingency, oh, well, yeah. we didn't need to look at anything specific down there. I mean, that would just be IF. I, I tried to look at the uh, fibers down there, and it was such a mess from the alpha being gone. I couldn't really tell what was what. But he assures me they'll be available. OK. See, the alpha has its own cable wrap. Right. Yeah. To Because as the arm turns to track an object, the receiver turns with it. Yeah. And that would twist the yeah. position of the array elements in the sky. So it has its own drive and cable wrap to undo that. Wow. And uh, so there are, I guess, two fiber bundles. The main bundle for alpha and a spare bundle. Yeah. And typically both have been run through that local cable wrap together. And so I knew it was, the spare was out of the cable wrap yeah. to support our previous project. Yeah. So I asked that it remain out of the yeah. wrap configuration. Oh, that's great. So we'll have to fill it out. I've got a, I think it's a 30 meter chunk of fiber hedge cord down in my office, so that'll reach anywhere. I doubt if we'll need it even. Well, pretty doable. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I think we're we just gotta get the damn power amplifier here. And so what I'm going to have to do is basically go back to the hotel room and kind of shepherd that. And you guys stay up here and uh, work the uh, receiver. Yep. Last I heard, they had phones in there. I've called. Can we split the IF on receive to two different radios? Or can we do what? We can, we can split the IF out from the receiver to two different radios? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. So we'll, we'll just record on both. Yeah, we'll record on one and then experiment on the other or something like that. The basic arrangements down there. Yeah, generally, starting that big diagram, we have an RF coming in, or our first IF coming in down there. Yes. That's, that's sent over fibers also, just for instance. But right. anyway, uh, then that defines the bandwidth. We can select different bandwidth filters. And then there are eight different um, down converters looking at that IF band and can be used to generate eight different or to look at eight different sub bands if you wish or yeah. pretty much anything you want. They'll have their if, own. If you want, you can tune them all, all eight to the same frequency. It'd be kind of silly to do, but you can do that if you want. And then those eight mixer outputs go through a little bit of additional filtering. Each one is split up into, I believe it's eight different well isolated buffer outputs yep. that go to the back end room where most people have their back end equipment. 
and then plus one front panel output. Okay, great. So we're pretty versatile. Let's hope those damn parity bits are correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, our confidence level is getting pretty high on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy now, to hear that. We never quite got an answer on the on the um, magnitude of the, the the modulation index for the phase on the uplink. Yeah, 1.2, whatever it is in that last document. Yeah. So. Uh, we can we can experiment. Yeah. We can mess around with that. So. Okay. All right. I'm happy with that. You know, I think if we if we pick something a little higher, then that should still work. Too low might might be a bit of an issue. Smile. Dana, could you please take a photo of us from there? Thank you. I can't tell if your eyes are closed or not. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't matter much. Thank you very much. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, did she say what's the name of that dude? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, my... my it's a soft A on your name, right? Fallent? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. It either sticks or it doesn't. <laughs> I say it however I last heard it. How what? I say it however I last heard it. Oh, you heard it, heard it perfectly, I think. I heard <laughs> also. Well, we'll... Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Uh, Doing a fist bomb. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna try right. some stuff right. so we're so, so I'm a little unclear about what this coax is for. If we have fiber all the way into that room. Well, no, the fiber transducer is down in the receiver room, and we need to get it up. Oh, oh I thought we had it at that junction box. All right. There's a little plate over there. If it was at that junction box, then we wouldn't need it. Well, we wouldn't have any problems with foam rubber coax going out. Once the okay. switch that controls how much power goes each way um, was stuck or something, and we wind up hitting several hundred kilowatts to keep power back into that metal plate. It's really <coughs> fairly thin piece of metal. It's taking a year all the way. Hot yes, the place. And melted foam rubber all over the place. It's a terrible mess. Yeah. Nobody, nobody was up there right now. Yeah. I'll just head over here. Epic shot. Yeah. 
you know, guess you're getting your own epic shots now, huh? Yeah. I gotta go over there on the catwalk. Someday I would really like to find a way to That's pretty good. suspend myself at the center of curvature yes. and then yell something at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta learn to yodel first. <laughs> yodel a woo -hoo. Not quite, huh? Now, it used to be that when we were operating either of the transmitters, we, we would operate this loud, repetitive warning horn up here. Yeah. And generally that would that would get turned on a few minutes in advance, so you, the person might still be up here. But that was great. You could hear it echoing off the hills all around. They want it back. <laughs> that annoying thing. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it come back too. What's that? The warning horn for transmitting. Ah, yeah. Well, I, I've heard that people living in the area complained about it. Oh, really? Yeah. You could hear it now. Coming up here, well, coming up the road. I'm going to pass halfway. Okay, they're past the knuckle. Can we go? Yeah. Okay. Just don't look back. Turn to stone. <laughs> that won't be very good for the rest of the mission. All right, guys. Y'all ready? showing us the pictures where you see hit a wood. Yeah, Luckily we don't have to kick these in that advance. That would have been awful on the steep part because they'd be slippery and rain. Well and he said he said you know occasionally somebody would like kick their foot through one. And oh man. Fuck her back here building. <coughs> And that's all coming from the generation facility down there. Uh, you can't see the generator itself here. Well, what you're seeing down there so far is mostly warehouse and their funny little paint storage. Phil took us on a drive through there yesterday. Well, we'll get a chance to see the power generation facility as we walk down. But well after we're off the camera. Favorite problem with that? Caused by stray electrons being intercepted by the microwave structure inside the, the tube. Oh. And ideally, you'd want that to be zero, but it's never really is. Oh, 
full raft assault positions that are automatically detected will cause a shutdown. One of the things. Problem. Oh yeah. I can. The the way they're shut down basically is in addition to doing everything they can to turn off problems, with that, to also throw a dead chart across the high voltage power supply. It's called Obar. 